Hey folks, welcome to the welcome to Just Calvin uh, learning through a uh, MM, cloudy MMP lens. Uh, if I got that right. Anyway, welcome to the show. Either way, uh, I wanted to do a show. At least, uh, uh, yeah, a show. Um, explain what quantitative easing because, like everything else, that word tends to be thrown around amongst uh, Wall Street and business type networks, Fox News business, you know, pretty much everything to make it seem negative. Um, I kind of wanted to go over that just a little bit. Um, and me kind of start with, uh, let's see. Now, I want to there we go. Okay, so this is obviously, as you see, is from Wikipedia. Money creation to increase the money supply, debt monetization, financing the government by borrowing from central bank, uh, in effect, creating new money, security printing uh, as applied to bank notes, quantitative easing, a type of monetary policy that increases the, uh, the money supply. Uh, and of course, what I, uh, I'm a proponent of is monetary theory. But what most people don't really, I don't think, consider is the like the monetization. A lot of people think that uh, the government is monetizing the debt, when the reality is actually the corporations monetize their own debt in order to raise their own capital. Uh, so let me just kind of just sit. Uh, yeah, okay. What is a corporate bond? A corporate bond is a type of debt security that is issued by a firm and sold to investors. The company gets the capital it needs, and in return, the investor is paid a pre-established number of interest payments at either a fixed or a variable interest rate. When the, when the bond expires or reaches maturity, the payments cease and the original investment is returned. The backing for the bond is generally the ability of the company to repay, which depends on its pro prospects for future revenues and profitability. In some cases, the company's physical assets may be used as collateral. The key takeaways of this is a corporate bond is a debt issued by a company that in, uh, in order for it to raise capital. An investor who buys a corporate bond is effectively lending money to the co company in return for a series of interest payments, but then bonds may also actively trade on the secondary market. Corporate bonds are typically seen as a as somewhat riskier than U.S. government bonds, so they usually have higher interest rates to compensate for this additional risk. The highest quality and or safety, lower uh, yielding bonds are commonly referred to as triple A bonds, while the least credit credit worthy are termed junk, which is basically what happened during the housing crisis and the financial crisis of, of uh, twenty oh eight. Understanding corporate bonds in the investment hierarchy, high uh, high quality corporate bonds are considered a relatively safe and conservative investment. Investors building balanced portfolios often add bonds in order to offset riskier investments such as growing stocks. Over a lifetime, these investors tend to add more bonds and native capital. Retirees often invest a large portion of their assets in bonds in order to establish a rival income supplement. In general, corporate bonds are considered to have a higher risk than U.S. government bonds. As a result, an interest rates are, as a in result, interest rates are almost always higher on corporate bonds, even for companies with top flight credit uh, quality. The difference between the yields uh, yields on oh sorry yields on highly really, uh, uh, rated corporate bonds and U.S. Treasuries is called a credit spread. Corporate bond ratings before being issued to uh, the issue uh, issuer by one uh, by one or more of the three U.S. rating agencies. I, I believe Moody's is one of them. Uh, Standards and Poor's Global Ratings, Moody's, as I just uh, uh, mentioned, Moody's Investors Services and Fitch Ratings. Rated bonds are common. the lowest rated of greater interest rate. rates. Ratings are vitality of uh, the bond in question. These ratings consequently uh, greatly influence interest rates, investment appetite, and bond pricing. 
how corporate bonds are sold. Corporate bonds are are issued in blocks of one thousand dollars in face or par value. Almost all have a standard coupon payment structure. Typically, a, a corporate issue will enlist the help of an investment bank to underwrite and market the the bond offering to investors. The issuer until the bond matures value of the bond or a rate that floats in the theater provision it. If prevailing interest rates change so dramatically that the company deems it can do better by issuing a new bond. Investors may also opt to sell the bonds, uh, sell bonds uh, before they the mature. If a bond is sold, the owner gets less than face value. The amount is worth, uh, the amount it is worth is determined primarily by the number of payments that still are due uh, bef uh, before the bond may also on focus. Uh, corporations sell bonds financing for many businesses of credit ready, the ready debt finance equity finance and does not entail giving up money. okay so, so uh, generally speaking a, a company needs to have consistent earnings potential to be able to offer debt securities to the public or excuse me uh to the to the public at a favorable coupon rate if a company perceives credit quality is higher it can issue more debt at lower rates so effective, this is what is the uh, is the monetization of of uh, of debt. Big corporations do this all the time. That's that's a lot of times how they actually finance other uh, either their uh, uh, stock buybacks or any other, any other acquisitions they actually wanted to make. Which is probably the reason why the housing market fell, fell apart the way it did as well. Uh, let's see. Now, this is basically the hundred companies whose debt. And more than likely, like hedge funds, went on and bitched about quality. They were some of the ones benefiting from the process. So when someone wants to sit there and say that the Fed is printing money, then they're not actually. They're they're buying up actual securities of, of corporations that want to use that money for something else. And the debt itself has a maturity rate. So anyway, so let's see. Here are some of the companies that uh, have a uh, debt that the Fed has bought. Toyota, of course, Volkswagen, uh, Daimler Finance, not really sure, uh, Consumer Sick, okay, uh, AT and T, Apple, Verizon, uh, General Electric, uh, Ford Motor, Comcast, uh, BMW, Microsoft, uh, AV Inc, General Motors Inc, or uh, General Motors Fin, uh, CVS Health, and BP Cap Markets. Let's see. The Fed began the, this program on June 6th and is set to expire uh, September 30th. Uh, not, yeah, that didn't that, 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 Actually, I think that probably did happen. But anyway, it has so far bought individual bonds worth about $429 million from from cyclical or not cyclical. Uh, as as uh, why the central bank, Apple or foreign companies, I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. I'm not going to try. Point out that the top six companies, Toyota, Volkswagen, Delmar, AT&T, Apple, and Verizon makeup, 10% of the index. The Fed bonds buying, which has led to a record insurance, uh, insurance this year, has also been blamed for causing disconnect between the economy and the stock market. Actually, that, that happened a long time ago. Um, it happened just after the financial crisis of 2008. Anyway, the Fed also uh, buying corporate bond ETFs as part of the $750 billion emergency lending program to buy corporate debt as of June 16th. And has bought 6.8 billion in corporate bond ETFs. This includes 1.7 billion worth of iShares, iBox, US dollar investment grade corporate bond ETF. Uh, total corporate debt purchases through corporate credit facilities was 8.7 billion through June 24th. Now, again, this is 2020, so this is a couple of years ago, but they kind of continued on up until about, I think they, they've lowered it down as far as the part goes. And they're trying to, I believe, try to resell those same, uh, resell those bonds back to, back to those companies. But anyway, that's pretty much what I wanted to bring up as far as this particular episode goes. Uh, now you know what, uh, now you know what, um, what, uh, printing money is or what, uh, what it isn't. Hopefully, anyway, uh, I'll do another episode where I'm trying to, uh, uh, name, uh, say what it is and stuff of that nature. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, uh, support this program, support this channel, support realprogressives.org. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Peace out for now.
And we know that this burden falls particularly in an unequal way on black folks and other people of color. And we just got to go ahead and put that in the testimony as well. But if you, yes, and especially black women, and if you are poor or among the working poor or the barely middle class in these United States of America, and you do what you were asked to do, what you were told to do, the thing, the very thing that you were told that was gonna lift you up, and you do that thing, and then you find yourselves walking across a stage with a backpack full of debt in, on your back, and debt in your hands and a degree, and it is immoral to do so, and we calling it out. You know what I'm saying? When I say hands up, I need you to say fight back. You ready? Hands up, fight back! 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 Hey, I forgot to mention one thing. Now, I was just talking about uh, the Fed purchasing, purchasing debt and uh, purchasing debt and, and other bonds, stuff of that nature. Well, here, this is how, uh, what they do in regards to selling it off and, and, and try to uh, do an, a, a repurchasing agreement. Uh, this obviously you see this from uh, Investopedia. I do a lot, and I, I, a lot of my stuff is explained from there and other things. I could take notes, but why not just go to the website? Anyway, uh, so what is a repurchase agreement? A repurchase, a repurchase agreement, a repo, is a form of short-term borrowing for dealers and government securities. In the case of repo, a dealer sells government securities to investors, usually at, on a, uh, an overnight basis, and buys them back the following day at a slightly higher price. The, that small difference is price uh, in price is the ex implicit overnight interest rate. Repos are typically used to raise short-term capital. They are also a common tool of central bank uh, uh, open market operations. For the said in the future, it is of the transaction buying the securities, a repo agreement or buy, the bank repo is effectively borrowing and the other party is lending. Since the lender is credited the implicit interest in the differences in prices from initiation to repurchase. Repos and reverse repos are thus used for short-term borrowing and lending, often with a tenure of overnight to 48 hours. The implicit interest rate on these, I think, yeah, implicit interest rate, these agreements is known as a repo rate, a proxy for overnight risk-free rate. Now, understanding repurchase agreements. Repurchase agreements are generally considered safe investments because the security in question functions as collateral, which is why agreements uh, involved in U.S. Treasury bonds classified as money market instrument, uh, as a money market instrument, a repurchase agreement functions in effect as a short-term collateral-backed interest-bearing loan. The buyer acts as a short-term lender while the seller acts as a short-term borrower. The securities being sold are the collateral, thus the goals of both parties secured, funding and liquidity are met. Repurchasing agreements can take place, enters into repurchase, uh, into repurchase agreements to regulate the money supply and bank reserves. Basically having control over how much money goes into the system. So it may be quote unquote money printing in that direction, but it's not like they don't control uh, the amount of money that goes in there. That's why they, re that's why they repurchase, the, uh, repurchase it. Repurchase agreements are strictly short-term investments and their maturity period is called the rate. The term 
or the tenure or tenure. Despite the similarities to collateral collateralization and collateralized loans, repos are actually purchased uh, actual purchases. However, since the buyer only has a temporary ownership of the security, these agreements are often treated as loans for tax and accounting purposes. In the case of bankruptcy, in most cases, repo investors can sell the collateral. This is another distinction between repo and collateralized loans. I forgot, I got the freaking word. In the case of most collateralized loans, bankrupt uh, investors would be subject to a, a automatic stay. <clears throat> Excuse me. In terms, in term versus uh, open repurchase agreements. The major difference between a term and an open repo lies in the amount of time between the sale and the repurchase of the securities. Repos that have specified maturity date are usually the, the following day or week. Our term repurchase agreements, a dealer sells securities to a counterparty with the agreement that he will buy them back. This agreement, the counterparty of the sanction, or sanction, excuse me, the trans as the difference between it. the interest will be paid at maturity by the dealer. A term repo is used to invest cash or finance as assets when the parties uh, know how long they will need to do so. An open repurchase agreement, also known as uh, on-demand repo, works the same way as a term as a term repo except that the dealer and the counterparty agree to the transaction without selling or uh, sorry setting the uh, maturity rate or date rather the trade can be terminated by either party by giving notice to the other party prior to the agreement upon agreed upon excuse me, daily deadline if an open repo is not terminated it automatically rolls over each day interest is paid monthly and the interest rate is periodically repriced by mutual agreement. The interest rate on an open repo is generally closed to, close to the federal funds rate. An open repo is used to invest cash or finance assets within when the parties do not know how long they will need to do so, but nearly all open agreements conclude within one or two years. The significance of the tenure Repos with longer tenures are usually considered higher risk during a longer tenure. Uh, more factors can affect repurchase her credit, credit worthiness and interest rate fluctuates are more likely to happen on an impact. As similar to the credit market condition, a long-term bond substantially in life action it is most and will occur, driving interest rates above forecasted ranges. If there is a period of high inflation, the interest paid on bonds preceding that period will be worth less in real terms, which is the reason why a lot of people in these days are actually like selling off bonds and all that stuff to get back into higher risk type of corporate bonds because they yield a higher, they have a, a higher yield to them. But it also means that if the, if the corporation or the corporate bonds, they, they uh, loan the creator and uh, the principal, which reduce, exceeds the value of collateral. The types of repurchase agreements. Most common type is a third party repo, also known as a tri party repo. In this arrangement, a clearing agent or bank conducts the transaction, the Fed in, in the most cases, uh, transactions between the buyer and seller protects the interest of each. It holds the securities and ensures that the seller receives cash on, at the onset of the agreement and that the buyer transfers funds for the benefit of the seller. Again, this is the Fed, is the, is the in-betweener as far as this part goes. Uh, the primary clearing banks for tri-party uh, tri uh, report in the United States are J.P. Morgan Chase and Bank of New York uh, Mellon. In addition to take, taking custody of the securities involved in the transaction, these clearing agents also value the securities and ensure that a specific margin is applied. The setter and setter, the, they settle the transaction on their books and assist dealers in optimizing collateral. What clearing banks do not do, however, is act as a matchmaker. Uh, these agents do not find dealers for cash investors or vice versa, and they do not act as a broker. Typically, clearing banks settle repos early in the day, although a delay in settlement usually means that billions of dollars of intraday credit are extended to dealers each day. These agreements cons constitute between 80 to 90% of the repurchase of, uh, of the repurchase, repurchase agreement market, which held approximately 1.6 trillion as of 2016. 
which has gone up, I guess, quite significantly in 2022. But anyway, in a specialized delivery repo, the transaction requires a bond uh, guarantee at the beginning of the agreement. And upon maturity, this type of agreement is not very common. In a held in custody repo, the seller receives cash for the sale of the security but holds it in a uh, custodial account for the buyer. This type of agreement is even less common because there is a risk the seller may become an insolvent and the borrower may not uh, have access to the collateral. Near and far lakes, like many other corners of the financial world, repurchase agreements involve terminology that is not commonly found elsewhere. One of the most common terms in a repo space is lake. There are different types of lakes. Uh, for instance, the, port, the portion of the repurchase agreement and transaction in which the security is initially sold is sometimes referred to as the start leg, while the repurchase uh, which follows is the close leg. These terms are also sometimes exchanged for the leg of a repo transaction leg. It is repurchased. Uh, you can go to investor thing. Um, I hope, you, I hope you got what was referred to as far as that part goes. Um, I will be doing uh, my Substack later on, so look forward to that. And as always, if you like what you hear, you see, support, subscribe, comment, like, share, and support me and Real Progressives. Peace out for now. North Korea has that. 32 out of 33 modern industrialized countries have that. How are you going to pay for it? We're going to be like North Korea. We'll have to borrow the money from China. Where are you going to find the money?